Wow, here we are again. We are winding up the uh, six chapters in the book of Timothy. And we have come through and uh, ran each chapter out and done a little excerpt on each chapter, a, a minute teaching of each chapter. If we were really breaking down verse by verse and going through it uh, astutely, we would be in the book for a month or more maybe. And so we're, we're just browsing it. We're just browsing over it. It's like plowing new ground and planting seed in it. And then the real thing comes up, the plant, and produces fruit. And what we're doing is we're just plowing the ground here in Timothy. And if you'll get in it and dig out in it, you'll get the fruit out of it. But just to browse over it, you're not really getting the fruit. You're just breaking the ground up. And so if you really want the fruit, you need to get into yourself and study it. Uh, it's six chapters. If you did one chapter a week and spent the week in that chapter, get up in the morning, read that whole chapter. And if you don't have time to really study it, Read it before you go to bed at night. And the next morning, do chapter 2 the same way and read it. In six days, one week, you have read the book twice by reading the chapter in the morning and at night. And then the following week, you can say, Lord, I want you to show me what I've read. And you read chapter 1 again in the morning. And you meditate on it a little bit and see what God will show you and he will show you if you're astute in the Bible God will enhance your Christian life like you would not believe such a little book of five chapters and uh, five times twenty is a hundred so it's probably not more than a hundred verses of scripture and uh, so and you can read that just by reading six days, read, read it in the morning, and read it again at night before you go to bed, and look at it a little bit, and do that through for a week. That's reading it in the morning and night, and then the next week, you can start studying it. And as you do, it'll come back to you, the words. Let as many, let as many servants that's quite a word. There's no comma behind that, but I'd put one there. As I under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, let the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. In other words, we are, in a sense, in slavery under our pastor. We are slaves to the word of God already. And he is the man that is telling us what the word of God says. And so therefore, we take the fact that we're already a slave to the word, that what he says becomes under, we are kind of under slavery. That Listen to it. And, and understand what he's breaking down and saying to us. If we don't do that, uh, in the olden days, uh, it wasn't uh, an odd thing to hear that a man was getting whipped. Uh, I, I've heard right here in the United States of America where they would tie a man to a tree and whip him for different things that he did. That he wouldn't do them again. And they put the lash on his back. And, uh, for, and they didn't have the jailhouse full of people. Because they straightened them out right there. They all got the men got together and took him over there and said, Hey, hey, John Doe, you can't do that. And we're going to teach you. You can't do that. We're going to tie you to this tree and we're going to lash you. And they lash him. Let him stay there a while and then turn him loose. Treat him again like a normal citizen. And he acted like a normal citizen. He learned his lesson that he wasn't going to do that anymore. And, uh, and this is what 
the exhortation of Timothy is uh, a master is worthy of honor. In the name of God, his doctrine is not blasphemed. How do you blaspheme the doctrine of God? By not, by not respecting the preacher? By not respecting the teacher? Yeah, you know, the preacher is not just any other new, another man. The preacher is on a pedestal that God put him on. And you are to honor him. You are to honor the preacher. You never use his name in a slight way. Or in a, uh, you know that, you know that guy there, he's the preacher of the church. You, you don't say that. He's my preacher. And, and I am to respect him highly. And he gives himself for me and for you. And we ought to listen and we ought to learn from him. And this is what Timothy's saying here. Listen and learn. Paul's saying to Timothy, be astute, Tim, so that people will respect you and they'll follow you. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exalt. He's saying, now respect those that are over you, Tim, the other preachers around. And if you're going to be a preacher, you're going to have to uh, not be a blasphemer. What is blaspheming? That's not being careful over the doctrine that you're in charge with, in charge to. Now he's saying in verse 3, excitation to godliness with contentment. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is a proud, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strife of words. Wherefore, cometh envy, strife, railings, and evil things, uh, uh, surmisings, uh, uh, preserve a disputing of men of corrupt minds, and uh, destitute of the truth, supposing that they gain the godliness from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great. Verse 3 through 5 is talking about the man that every single time you see him, he poses to you the same question. Something off the wall. I have two or three men in my life that periodically I'll meet. And when I meet them, I'm going to get that same question. That question may be, I'm not going to say what it would be, because it's a confusing question. It's a confusing question. They ask a confusing question where there's no real answer for them. There is an answer, and you know it. But for them, they won't accept it. And they know what you're going to say when they say what they say. And if you say what you were going to say, they say, I knew you was going to say that. So a year goes by, maybe two, you run across the same man. He asks you the same question. He's stuck in a rut. He has walked around that circle so long that the ground he's walking on has got so deep that he can't see over the bank. And he's in trouble. He's in trouble. If he would mark where he started and come around to that and look at it and stop and say, this is foolishness. But he won't do that. He'll walk by that mark, put another mark there. So before he's done with his life, He's got 360 days in a year 
And if he's 10 years, he's got 3,600 marks there of doing the same thing. Asking the same question to every Christian that he meets. And never getting a different answer. And so, there we are. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to do the doctrine which is according to the godliness. He is a proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Wherefore cometh envy, strifes, railings, and evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men, corrupt minds, disputing of the truth, supposing to gain uh, his godliness, from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it, it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they are, be rich, fall under temptation, and a snare under many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men in destruction and perdition, which means they have gone away, all the way into perdition, separated. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which will some covet after they have erred from the faith and uh, pierced themselves throughout with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, Flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I got news for you, friend. You are laying a foundation in heaven. When you get there, all you're going to have for rewards is what you have on that foundation. If you laid the foundation and you have it not built on it, you will have the foundation. That's because you asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin, come into your heart and save your soul. You've got the platform and you've got the foundation. But we are to lay up treasures in heaven by our works, good works, daily, all day long. What we do is part of our works. And we lay up each day something in heaven. The Bible said we're building a mansion there. And my question to you, have you sent a nail up there today? To nail a weather, have you sent a weatherboard up there? It might take a week to send a weatherboard up there. Have you sent a weatherboard up there? Have you sent a nail to nail the weatherboard on your mansion? Or is your mansion yet just a foundation and nothing has ever been put on it? You say, Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. You got a foundation. That is your platform. That is your foundation. Now you have it. Are you building on it? Are you building on it? Or are you tearing down? I, I came to the decision back in 1972, November 5th, at 3 o'clock in the morning when I got saved, drunk as a skunk, God delivered me from alcohol and from cussing. Never took another drink, never swore another cuss word. But I began to look at the foundation in 1973. 72 November, December, January, February, yeah. It was probably February uh, of that same year, three months. I went out back at 3 o'clock in the morning to light a cigarette. And God said to me, I delivered you from those cigarettes the same time that I delivered you from all that other stuff. I threw the cigarette down and stomped it. It wasn't but a month later, five weeks maybe later, 
that I had an old school bus in my backyard jacked up and the wheels took off and we were getting tires on it and James Walls was putting a new motor in it I had sanded it and was painting it blue putting our church name on it Oakside Baptist Church and took it out and put it on the road and we started a bus ministry and we did that with several buses ended up with several buses and going out building a bus ministry filling it up I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep the commandments without spot unbreakable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which is in his time he shall show who the blessed and only potentate King of Kings and Lord of Lords who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man has seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting Amen charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the loving God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good that they be rich in the work of God ready to de debate uh, willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold of eternal life there's your foundation verse 19 Oh Timothy keep that which is committed to, to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babbling and oppositions of uh, science fleshly so called which some profane have ed concerning the faith be with thee Amen the faith be with thee Amen Wow what a man that is there goes my phone again I can't do that uh, okay uh, dealing with a man that has very very great problems and to be calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning and he's been up all night and he's been doing uh, pills and drinking and everything and and I'm praying for him and hope God will uh, actually it's going to take God to intervene to help him I can't help him no matter what I do and I'm not getting in my car going down there again today he lives 40 something 50 miles from me yeah, out in the woods and but God anyway is on the throne you pray with me for this unknown man that God would uh, touch him and we'll see you next time Right. Bye-bye.